Hey guys, this is Bob flying solo for the Bob and Ramon show with a short video, uh, something a bit of a departure, uh, certainly for me. Uh, I want to talk to you today about uh, an attenuator device that I've just built from schematics on uh, guitar.com. It was actually published a few years ago um, and I just uh, tripped across it uh, when I was looking through guitar.com back issues after they featured my collection. Uh, in a recent issue. Um, I've wanted to build something for a long time. I'm quite handy with the soldering iron and soldering up leads and stuff like that, but I've never really done electronics. I don't understand electronics. I'm not very good at reading electronic circuits. Um, the thing about an attenuator is it's an incredibly simple uh, device, at least this one is. Um, and I thought, hey, buy the components, give it a go. Um, so this little box here is what I'm going to talk about. Um, I'm playing my 73 Telecaster today, which is, a, you know, I know every, every old guitar's a bit of money these days, but this is a pretty straight up, normal, ordinary guitar, not, you know, super vintage, super expensive or anything. It's an achievable guitar. And I'm playing it as usual through my um, Fender Deluxe Reverb Reissue, um, an app that I bought for not very much money a few years ago. And the reason I'm using this gear is because I don't want the gear to influence the sound. I want to use the kind of gear that a lot of people could access rather than some of the posh vintage stuff, though I might do a little vintage flourish at the end. Um, so that you have an idea of what this pedal does. Now, before I play it, a bit of backstory. Um, uh, many of my amps have got uh, either power scaling or they've got external uh, volume controls that the Dumble amps I've got have got Dumbleator um, type um, external loop devices um, which have like a master volume. So I really don't need an attenuator very much for those, but I do need an attenuator for this deluxe because it's only 22 watts, but the last time I played the Half Moon pub in Putney, which is a serious venue in London, it was the usual shit. You know, I couldn't get the bloody thing above three before the sound engineer started complaining. I couldn't get it above four before the drummer started complaining, and to get a really nice sound out of that, I wanted on seven. Guitarless to Malay. So, um, even something as small as a deluxe needs an attenuator. This is why Princetons are so popular at about 12 watts, because you can really crank them and get them in their sweet spot. So I've always thought about attenuators, but attenuators are pretty variable, they're quite expensive, uh, I didn't really know what I was getting into. So when I saw this, I thought, look, I can kill two birds with one stone because I can have a go at making something for myself and see if I'm competent. It's not going to cost me too much money. If it doesn't work, it's not an expensive flop. And if it does work, great, it's a bonus. So that's the backstory. Um, the circuit appears in guitar.com, but warning here, uh, there's two things wrong with it. The first thing is that one of the components, one of the switches, they helpfully give all the suppliers and the contact details and all the, the stock part numbers so you can order the stuff pretty quickly. Or at least you can with the exception of one of the switches, which is discontinued. And finding a replacement for that discontinued switch, bit of a chore, but I've done it. So that's the first thing. That's not really their fault because the feature was three or four years old and companies changed their stock lines. There's also a mistake in the circuit, which is a bit of a problem because it means that when you wire up the attenuator the first time round, it works fine, but backwards. So clockwise is quiet and anti-clockwise is loud, which is just for me counterintuitive. It's the same way as when I use a, an amplifier with a cut control, like a Vox or a train wreck. The cut is basically a high frequency roll off but in reverse, so as you turn it up, it cuts more. And it takes me a long time to get used to what's essentially a backwards control, so I didn't want it on my attenuator. Right, that's that. When I built it first, because it worked backwards, I thought, meh. And then I found online um, a YouTube uh, video where basically the guy, a really competent guy, assembles the pedal from the guitar.com plans. And uh, he doesn't make any mention of it, but he's quite clearly encountered the same reverse issue as I do because he's changed the circuit around. It's very simple. It's just reversing two tags on the big volume control resistor thingy. 
So he's done that. So uh, I'm going to be posting the links to these things on this video. So the first thing is definitely follow the YouTube video rather than the originalguitar.com thing. Now, last disclaimer before I play it to you and see, you can see what you think. It also has a switch on it. In fact, I'll take you through the device now. It's here and I'll put a close up on the screen. This is just your big volume control. Great little thing and inside there's a huge wire wound eight ohm resistor thing, your variable resistor, right? It's, this is what it is. Um, this switch simply switches it in and out of the circuit, in and out. And this switch has two capacitors of choice attached to it and gives you a little bit of treble roll off and a lot more treble roll off if you find that the attenuator sounds getting too fizzy. On top here, you've got an input jack, an output jack, and a switch here which changes it from 8 to 4 ohms. So if you want to use a couple of 8 ohm cabs in parallel, that's 4 ohms. This can accommodate without having your amp. So that's, that's a clever little design, and that's all there is to it. Okay, so why don't I play it to you? Now, I've got my deluxe set. I'll tell you what the controls are. Volume is on 7, treble 6, bass 6. Reverb about two. Okay, that's it. So this is going to be loud. It's probably going to compress into the iPad I'm recording on. But I'll play this at real volume, not attenuated. <laughs> that's pretty loud. Um, my neighbours might complain. Um, if you lived in a flat, you'd have some pissed off neighbours. So that can't work and as I say I've actually had people have had a go at me playing live at that volume okay so it's a problem right so if I switch the attenuator in the first thing to test is with it on maximum does it make any difference it shouldn't okay so just <laughs> if it attenuates. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to turn it all the way down to zero. Right, this is now on minimum. You can hear it. That's minimum. Okay, it's really quiet. This is nighttime bedroom volume. It's very, very quiet. T take it up goes up pretty quickly. This is a wire round wound resistor, so if you listen carefully, the, the, the sound is actually going up as the, uh, the wiper crosses the resistor wires. It's actually dip, 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 dip. It's not continuous like a, a carbon track. Okay. Now that is a pretty good kind of rehearsal practice volume. It's got a bit of meat in it, um, but... So that's, to me, pretty acceptable around here. Now, the, the control's all the way down here. It's really low. It's about, if it starts at 7 o'clock, we're at about 8.15, 8.30. Um, as it gets louder, if I take it up to half power, now this is something you could use at a gig. But So that sound engineer would probably love me for operating at around about this level. Uh, they'd probably love it. And that is all I'm going to demo today. The reason is because I, was a, I want to do a shout out here. Well, I'll get another guitar out in a minute. But I want to do a quick shout out in case anybody out there is, is, who's watching this has actually made one of these. And the reason is I haven't showed you the treble roll off control. And that's because in its current configuration, which I have followed the plans slavishly to do, I've checked the wiring <laughs> 12 times, it doesn't work. Now, I'm not entirely sure if it's because the switch that I've got, which is the correct part number, but let's remember that the original instructions were a bit... Uh, I'm not sure if the switch doesn't work in which case the switch is simply passing the ordinary signal through whichever position it's in, or whether the, the, the switch and the two capacitors that are soldered onto it are simply wired into the circuit across the wrong two points. The, the right two points on the schematic, but the wrong points insofar as they don't work. 
Now, the guy on the video says at the very end of it, he doesn't find that the treble switch makes any difference either, and further work is needed. So I'm just wondering if any of you out there have actually made this thing and have figured out how to make the treble switch work. To be honest, I like the sound of it so much I don't really need it, um, but uh, for the sake of completeness it would be nice to have, and since I've put the switch on the front, the switch might as well bloody do something. So that's that. Um, last thing, I want to give a shout out to my good friend Cliff Brown who makes my 633 amplifiers. Um, he, uh, he has power scaling, uh, it's a clever device, I'm not quite sure how it works, it's not really power scaling, but he has, has it on his amps. And they're fantastic to gig with because, you know, at full volume they're pretty meaty, but you can really tailor them back to keep the band and the sound, sound engineer off your case. You can really pull some of the raw back of the amps and they still sound fantastic. Um, and he's pretty dismissive of these devices. He, he describes this as a passive device. It just adds resistance to the back of the amplifier. Okay? And he's right, of course, whereas what you need really is a reactive load because the way a speaker works with an output transformer and tubes is it's, it's kind of more like air pressure and like a piston. In other words, it's not completely linear. It's, there's a sort of push and give and response, and that's the kind of the wonderful feel you get in turn, in play, when you play a valve amplifier turned up loud and you get that kind of springy sagginess. Now, part, part of that springy sagginess is the power, the power supply, is the power supply delivering enough power to the output tubes to deliver you faultless power. And that's, we get into the whole thing about tube rectifiers versus solid state rectifiers, and solid state can deliver more power and therefore more attack. But people like that push, that's more of a valve rectifier power supply type thing, where the power supply is, I can't quite give you enough power. The relationship between the output transformer and the speaker, think about it, both lots of coils of wire are acting under the pressure of power. Um, that's complicated as well, and that adds to that feel and that organic feel and sound of, of a tube amplifier towards the top end of its capability. So this doesn't do that. This is a dead resistor, it just adds resistance. Now, I thought it was going to be really lifeless. It isn't. It's pretty good. I mean, this cost me about 60 quid to knock up and a couple of hours of my time and then a couple more hours wasted <laughs> fixing it. Um, but it's, uh, it, it's pretty good. I mean, I, I, I'm going to take it to a rehearsal soon. I haven't got any gigs coming up yet. Please bring the gigs back. Um, but uh, I'm expecting to be able to use this. If, I, I may take this, this rig along as a secondary rig to a gig just so I can get to put it in, maybe for the first half of the set or something, and just try this out. Because I know the Deluxe works brilliantly. Um, it's a great kind of you know, one-size-fits-all, take-it-anywhere type amp. And with an, with an attenuator, I can you know, keep all the, the naysayers off my back. So, enough of that. I thought I might just play through a vintage guitar for you just so you can hear what that sounds like to conclude this video. Okay, this is my 55 Les Paul Jr, uh, which really does sing quite a hot P90 pickup, unmodified, another simple plank, bit like the telly, but uh, vintage guitar, hell of a tone, and this is uh, quite attenuated. I'm down here at about 8 o'clock, so there's a lot of attenuation going on here. See what you think of this tone. I like it. straight into a deluxe reverb reissue with a bit of attenuation. There you go. As always, keep your comments coming. Uh, and as I say, if anyone has made this thing and has actually got that part of the circuit to work, please message me. Or even better, send me a little drawing of the circuit and how you do it, because I am not there. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.